All right, so we've measured, we found a unit of measure and did some comparative measurements. We did some vertical plumb lines. What do you think makes sense to do next? How about horizontal plumb lines? Same thing. It's fairly easy to hold this out kind of parallel to the horizon and then line up and see what things line up across those lines. So you can play around with that as well. It's a very valuable tool. I think it's going to help me quite a bit. I'm still having some issues with what's going on here in the shoulders. Um, and so a horizontal alignment's going to help me with that, I think, quite a bit. For example, in my source, the left shoulder is quite a bit higher than the right shoulder. And in my drawing, it's really just not quite happening that way yet. So I need to really push down over here. And remember earlier I was talking about possibly wanting to get this to tilt over a little bit more and all of a sudden by pushing this down I end up with a little more space. Now we've got that shoulder pushing down the way we really want it to. Still gonna, still questioning what's the right width over here. We'll get to that soon enough, but I can see that there's something not quite right in there. And um, so I'm going to keep kind of going back to that and looking for more accurate information every, every chance I get. Okay. Other horizontals. Um, obviously his nipples are at the same type of tilt and my indication of them is almost horizontal in my drawing, which means I need to get this happening more downhill, which is gonna work. If you remember, we had to push down on the pectoral over here. That typically means everything else attached to it has to go lower, and all of a sudden I get nipple happening lower lower on here as well. Most all of these things, you know, it's not that I'm fixing just this one part, but its relationship to the other parts is changing as that happens. Now the tilt is starting to match that. I'll check that closer in a bit, but I've solved that horizontalness problem there. What else lines up with a horizontal across there? Ah, this watch face here should line up with this nipple here, which means this may have to move down a little bit. We'll keep that in flux for a while longer too. See what needs to happen. Um, if I go across right at the top of his knee, the closest thing I can notice is this little break at the wrist actually has to happen up here a little bit higher. And this little indentation right here of the wrist needs to be more in line with that. And I can, and often will, in these cases, push on one and pull on the other to get those alignments to fit. It's not always that this is correct, so this has to change. Sometimes I have to change both of them slightly. And that works for me too. Now let's take that line all the way across. Should be above his belly button. So 
That seems to be happening still. And should be hitting, yeah, kind of where this difference between the back of his hand and the fingers happens. That transition happens kind of in this space and that seems to be lining up okay with that. And the pointy part of his elbow actually should be down here quite a bit lower, which makes me able to come up and around that muscle there. Push down on that. These little changes like this, that's me getting this drawing to be more what he looks like. Let's see. It seems that the knee pit and the ankle might be have a relationship at least with horizontal and they don't the ankle needs to be higher than that but not that much higher so either the ankle needs to be pushed down or this needs to be pushed up we already pushed that down a little bit if you remember earlier and one of the problems I'm having with the drawing is the distance between here and here doesn't quite allow this finger to end where I need it to. And all of this seems like it needs to go downhill a little bit more. So I'm going to push down on that angle. A small change. But that small change opens up a new space where this index finger can come really close to touching it without actually hitting it. So again, little adjustments are making for more accuracy, which means I'm getting closer and closer to what that looks like. Not there yet, but I keep working at it. Uh, da -da -da. What lines up with the big toe? Big toe should be below all of that. It is. What lines up with the index finger on that side? It should end at the top of the knee pit. So if this is here, look at that. This hand has to change quite a bit and exist more in this area which is good. For you, it's gonna be, which is frustrating. But for me, I knew that the space between here and here was way too small with this hand down here. And so by aligning that fingertip with this knee pit, I started to figure out the answer to how I'm gonna solve both of those problems. does make everything else want to move and that's the thing you'll find with this whole sighting and measuring thing is you're constantly relocating various parts that's why we keep this really simple in the beginning we don't invest a lot of time and energy into those details early on so that allows me to push a little bit higher with that wrist so it can be above this knee makes my brain happy feels more like what I'm seeing and I can push this really isn't a sighting and measuring thing I'm just noticing that the knee blocks my view of the thumb and so I'm pushing on that as well. Okay. I noticed earlier that the cushion of the chair 
comes really close to actually disappears a little bit behind the foot on this side. And in a lot of ways, that cushion of the chair can be thought of as another horizontal in this drawing. And that works for me too. Okay. Got an obvious horizontal here. And all, of, all I'm really going to look at when I'm looking at the bottom of the cushion here is what does it run into on the leg? It's the only thing that's really of any importance to me. It's this curve, this change in direction right here, above or below that. And I can see that I have to come a little bit lower before I push out on the calf. Of course, I haven't moved all of that yet. So I'm going to end up redrawing that piece anyway. Um, and that the bulk of this curve and change in direction, the other side of that calf muscle, happens below that horizontal of the chair. And I just do that, it's more uh, kind of a reminder that that's the shape I'm going for when I twist on that. Here's another really good one is to line up, well, first of all, if I'm looking straight on at this chair, these two legs should end at the same point, and even these two should end at the same point. They should line up with each other. If I'm looking dead on it, there won't be an angle between those two. And it helps me get this side and this side to, to pair up the way I need them to. I would do the same thing up here as the, uh, kind of the square edge of the chair. And if I could see it on this side, I would run a line all the way across and make sure that this square of that chair is happening in the same space. But same thing we did here. This line that goes across here hits the leg in a very specific point. This line down here hits the leg or the foot in a very specific point. And so I can line that up and see what should be above and below all of that. For example, if I look at the very bottom, the feet of the chair, all of that should be below the ankle. And for now, where I have the ankle, that's true. The heel should be below all of that. So when I start redrawing the heel in its new space, it has to happen below that line. Let's check that, those back legs. All of that should be above the heel. I mean the ankle, sorry. And when I check that on here, it is cutting across above the ankle. So think about it. The ankle has to be above this line, below this line. That's a pretty small space. And so I'm fairly confident that this is where this needs to happen as far as the change in direction. Now it is going to end up happening probably more over here as I keep pushing this foot further and further this direction and getting this leg to go straighter and straighter. And see, just a few lines, the foot and the leg are starting to inch their way back to where they, excuse me, need to be. Um, other things I would probably, if I really wanted to get into his portrait, I might look at his earlobe and see if it lines up with his mouth. The top of his ear runs into the tip of his nose. The other ear is a bit higher. It's an interesting thing, really, to show me a bit about the tilt of the head. The bottom of this ear horizontally lines up with the top of this ear, which I kind of have, but now I know that I was in 
headed in the right direction when I did that in the first place. So anywhere, all the way across, I might even do, oh, this round at the top of his forearm and jump all the way across and see if it lines up with the meat of the top of the forearm here and by how much, which one's higher, which one's lower. Always asking these questions. And as you can see, while I'm doing all this, I might just be noticing other things and making small adjustments as I go anyway. 